Welcome back, everybody, here to Jones High School in Orlando, Florida, for tonight's 2021 kickoff classic as the Sanford Seminoles come over to take on the Jones Tigers here in the open up the 2021 season here in the state of Florida, in Orlando, and also here on VSN Orlando. Bobby Latmo bringing you a pregame show here right before kickoff. We'll be joined by Billy Daniel and Coach Kyle Hayes coming up here very shortly. The teams are on the field right now. You can see coming off, getting ready to go. Jones is going to be in orange tonight. A lot of players to watch tonight. We're going to take a look at a couple of them. Right now for Jones, the home team, the kid that we've always watched around a little bit here lately. Julian Calvez, man, we've watched him. We've covered him on a Beecher Sports Show that for Baylor Trujillo. Uh, this kid has transferred from West Orange, went through a little adversity with medical conditions, but has really come back now to be one of the standard kids here in the uh, Central Florida area. He will be someone to reckon with. We'll check him out tonight as they get ready. And another local comer here to transfer also from Oviedo over to Seminole this year, Luke Rucker, one of the highly – talented quarterbacks here in the Central Florida area, senior coming in this year. He will get some playing time as well as he starts his career here at Sanford. But a lot going on here tonight, folks. Some other players to watch as we'll get to them for Seminole. The five that we'll be watching here tonight, Jakari Henderson, Damari Henderson, Cameron Moore, Luke Rucker, as we mentioned before, and Dante Wack. The four right there, the Henderson twins and Moore and Dante Wack, all four, uh, they were on the team last year here for 2020 with the 8A state champions. A lot of experience coming out from there. And also from the Jones side, we'll pull up these guys here if we can find their ticket. We had them, but then we didn't load them. So I apologize, folks, but we'll get to the Jones players here in a little bit. But I tell you what, a lot going on right now. The players are about to come on the field. So we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, it's going to be Billy Daniel and Coach Kyle Hayes bringing you the kickoff here and everything else coming up here for the night here tonight. So don't go anywhere, folks. We'll be back right after this. You're watching the kickoff to the 2021 season here on Varsity Sports Network. And I'm going to tell you what, you can't get any better than this. We'll be back right after this. And your Jones High School Tiger. Ladies and gentlemen, please draw your attention to midfield for the coin toss. The next team captain. When you're a star high school student athlete, you compete tirelessly on the court and in the classroom to achieve your one dream of playing in college. Top schools recruit you and even offer you a scholarship. Then senior year hits and you find out that the class you took actually doesn't count. Your GPA is .25 off or your SAT score is 10 points too low. All because your counselor, your coach, and your parents couldn't make sense of the rules. And by the time you find out, it was too late to catch up. Boom. Game over. Honest Game is the clear pathway for getting in. We automate the process so the student, the parent, the coach, the counselor, and the college all get real-time eligibility updates. With Honest Game, everyone knows what to do before it's too late. In the last 20 years, total athletic scholarship money has grown from $2.5 million to over $3 billion. With the NCAA on the verge of allowing student athletes to earn money on their likeness, recruits and college coaches will more than ever need to know their eligibility status. Learn more at honestgame.com and let the dream live on. There's not a lot of places you can go where exactly what they put on their signs is exactly what you get in your food. So many people think that the way I eat and the way I train and a lot of things I do in life are because of sports. I want to be as healthy 50 years from now because every day that God gives me, I want to make the most of that. Clean juice, healthy, fast, organic food. Hey everybody, Charlie Bales from CB Supplements here. We are your collagen company, specifically your multi-sourced collagen company. 
We're the first and only NSF certified multi-source collagen on the market. Welcome everybody to beautiful Jones High School, right across the street from their campus. I'm Bill Daniel. Kyle Hayes joins me tonight on the broadcast call. We are excited to present to you one of the best matchups, kickoff classics anywhere in the state of Florida. Last year's defending 8A state champions, the Seminoles from Sanford High School versus one of the top 6A programs in the entire state, the Jones Tigers. When you look at these two programs, coach, in the last three years in Central Florida, Seminole has the highest winning percentage. The Jones Tigers come right behind them with a second highest percentage. What a great matchup we have tonight. I mean, definitely, man, look at it. You have both programs who are, are highly respected in each county. I mean, Seminole, of course, in Seminole County, and Jones here in Orange County, man. So here's the kickoff. The Tigers elected to receive the ball, won the toss. So 11 takes it up the middle, man, breaks out. Almost had it. Maybe about one step, man, he would have taken that to the house. He just missed it. But great field position for uh, the Jones Tigers here at about the 42-yard line. They take over on their own 42. That was Latravius Boyd, the senior running back, six foot, 190. The Tigers will drive start on their own 42. Right hash, Elijah Williams will run out an offense that for the most part is a young, young offense. They only returned six starters total on both sides of the ball from an eight and one team last year that made it deep into the playoffs before losing to Tampa Jesuit. Yeah, that's huge, man, like I said, but that's why you have these games, right? These are the games that you see what you have come, well, not necessarily coming back, but what games, you, the players that you have coming and seeing what they can do. Coach Williams motions is back out. You got those offensive linemen with their hand down in the ground a long time. It's hard to hold your water, isn't it? Yeah, man. Plus, the first play of the game, man, you got first play jitters, of course. You ready to fire off that ball and hit somebody in the opposite color, man. And come on, coach, on one, not on two. Let's get this thing rolling. Yeah, on one, go. First down. <laughs> coach Williams motioned out into an empty formation. See if he does that again. And he does. Daquan Harris at running back goes to the left side on the outside up top as a receiver. Julian Calvis off tackle. Picks up five. It'll be second and five. Calvez is a dual threat quarterback. Transferred in from West Orange last year. Split time at the quarterback position. Can beat you as we saw in the spring game at West Orange when he went played his former school. Mm -hmm. He can beat you in the air and on the ground. Yeah, they did a good job, and actually the, the pulling guards did a great job on that the quarterback power, man. They did a great job getting around the corner, opening that hole for him, so he could slide up in there and get back at least about uh, eight yards on that play. An interesting spot. They actually marked him only for a gain of three. Yeah, but remember it was a minus five. Quick screen to the running back. Let's go. Daquan Harris with one, one move, makes the strong safety miss, moves the chains, two plays, Tigers with their first first down of the ball game. You know, great play, man. It's interesting to see the, the play calls, man, especially out of Jones being kind of strategic and methodical with it, taking their time, knowing that they got some explosive players they could take the top off probably at any time, but let's go ahead. They might get it here. But look at the pace. They go first sound inside zone, right up the middle. The Seminoles are stout. Head coach Eric Lodge is the defensive coordinator. He's been there since he followed head coach Don Stark, the previous coach. He followed coach Stark from University High, high School to Sanford and has been the defensive coordinator since then. Yeah, it's interesting, man, to see this too, man. Jones doesn't huddle, right? So the quarterback is calling everything uh, right here from the field, from his position, man, and the receivers are receiving, I guess, signals from the side. Scrambler, come on. Preston Watson with great pressure coming off here. The near edge on the Jones sideline forces Calvez up into the pocket where Watson's teammates could put him down for a sack. Sets up a third and 14. You know, Seminole did a great job in standing their passing lanes, right? One time, you, since you get a quarterback that has legs the way he does, he can always escape, but they did a great job boxing him in and just making a group tackle. A lot of times guys make a mistake by trying to be the only one tackling, makes them miss, and it leaves a lane. Seminole rotates into a cover three defense, trips formation up to the Seminole bench. Calvez rolls, got a crossing route across the field, but with pressure he could not. He was hit as he released the ball. He could not get it to the crosser. 
Yeah, we've got a holding call right there. Looks like on the offensive tackle, man, as he actually beat the guy. There was no need for it. But, again, that's his first game jitters. Had the guy beat. Sometimes you got to just let him go, man. Lucas Fonseca, the senior the linebacker for the Knowles, in there helping put pressure. Brings up fourth down for the Tigers. Penalty is declined by Sanford. The Tigers pick up one first down on their first possession. But in three plays afterwards, the Knowles have them off the field. Yeah, like I said, I mean, Seminole did an excellent job there. You know, one first down, it is the very first play. And, uh, you know, like I said, just stopping them. Kyle, one of the most explosive players in all of Central Florida, two-sport athlete, basketball and football, Jakari Henderson, rated as the 34th best player in the state of Florida in the class of 23, is back to receive. The punt does not get to him, however. Smart move if you're the Tigers. You want to stay away from him. He is electric with a ball in his field. Yeah, you know, these games, like I say, special teams are the 33% of forgotten victory, man. Those are how games are won and lost a lot of the times, man, when it comes to special teams. So He's electric in the open field when he gets his hands on it. 9-24 here remaining in the first quarter as the Seminoles will drive start just inside their 15-yard line. Seminole with a new quarterback. Superman has moved on to the University of South Florida. <laughs> Timmy McLean and took one of his sidekicks, Jimmy Horn, with him. One of their most productive seasons, or receivers last season. That's how you stand. And Jones does a good job, right? They're, they're in their staple cover three defense. Uh, you know, bring a lot of pressure, bring a lot of blitzing, uh, and they'll switch that up in the man as well. So if you plan on running the ball, you got to get through a lot of orange jerseys in order to get some positive yardage. But trust me, they're going to be coming. They're going to bring a lot of pressure as well. And Coach Williams, he can bring pressure without having to dial up a blitz, can he? I mean, <laughs> the better your talent is, the more conservative your scheme can be. Definitely, man. He's got some good players. He's got some dogs. Darren Lawrence, the wide receiver in motion. That is considered a pass to pad Luke Rucker, the quarterback. Bobby Latmore featured him in our opening tonight, transferred in from Oviedo High School, one of the top passers in all of Central Florida last year from a statistical standpoint. So it goes for just a couple, sets up third and about seven from the far hash. Well, this be interesting, Billy. Will we see a receiver screen here? Or will we see one down the field? Something conservative, I bet. Quick screen. Get the ball out fast, because if you don't, that's what happens. Down, down, Coming down. hot off the top edge. Steven Sparrow from his linebacker position. Came right off the edge, man. He took advantage of the numbers, right? That's a huge thing when you're blitzing. We have to have plus numbers. So, exactly, Jones dialed up the perfect blitz at the perfect time. Took advantage of the uh, two-man surface they had over there. A man came free. I like a shot out of a, a cannon when he came off the edge. It's early, and when... Seminole's offensive coordinator, Woody Cox, looks at this later. Both the right guard and the right tackle are so worried with Jones' defensive end that neither one of them pick up the blitz. So you would slide to that blitz with the tackle taking the linebacker, rushing the edge with the guard picking up the defensive end, but they double team the defensive end. They did successfully block him, but Steven Sparrow with a big sack for the Tigers, getting the Seminoles off the field. Yeah, great job, man. It was a good punt, kept it away. But I noticed right there for Jones, number 15, I remember coaching, man, you're trying to show out, but stay away from the punt. Once it's dead, get away. If you touch it with your foot, it becomes a live ball. Do not turn it over trying to uh, show both. You know what I mean? Let's play smart football. You see that all the time. You're referring to James Weatherspoon, the senior defensive back with nine offers, featuring FAU, Arizona State, Charlotte, Kentucky, Mizzou, Western Michigan and UCF, just to name a few. Outside zone here to the Tiger bench, Daquan Harris on the carry, picking up about three. Harris, the ball carrier. Yeah, great job. Like I say, they're, they're setting some things up. I, I think we're going to see a shot here in a second, believe it or not. I can feel it. I feel it coming. I think maybe Coach might be trying to lull him to sleep. Let's see what they have from a physicality standpoint. Like you said, you only got six guys returning for the entire team. Uh, as so far as starters, man. So let me see what you guys got when you go against some other head busters out here. Fake the jet sweep, post There's to the shot. middle. You called it, shot play. <laughs> Outstanding coverage by Jakari Henderson. We featured him earlier as the kick returner. Back deep for the Seminoles. 
Yeah, they actually had great coverage. It looked to be really just a one-man route, believe it or not. It was just, they fully sold out on the play action, just a one-man route in the middle field. Safety came over just to make sure he wasn't open as well, man. So good coverage on both guys on the back end. But what Henderson did so well is he stayed on the top shoulder and made that post route flatten out. That's why the receiver could not get back to the ball. Great screen call here into the Jones Tiger boundary with their tailback still on the move. Down to the 30-yard line for a first down completed to Daquan Harris. Seminole wants to be just as aggressive as the Tigers on defense. We have an official timeout for the water break at 6.30. And I have to say, man, they actually did an excellent job. And shout out to number 29, CJ, to you. You are next. And with 6.30 remaining here in the first quarter, the Tigers, when they come back on the field, will have first and 10. But shout let's take it away for a message from our sponsors. Like no other. In 2021, 2021. This for 2021. They broke the glass. It's all say a prayer. The Delta variant. Biden is currently attending the G7 summit by the Chinese government. The ocean caught fire. To the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do. As we return to action, Jones is getting ready to snap it with a first down at their own 30. Calvez looking for the crossing route. It's covered, so just like any quarterback is taught to do, if your primary receiver is covered, get out the backside. Definitely, man. Look at it. He was covered. He said, Coach, I'm not going through progressions right now. Man, I trust me right now, and I'm out of here. I hit the eject button, and let's see if we can move these chains a little bit. Man. They were trying to run the little shallow route across the field. To the field, it was covered initially. Calvez saw the opening on the backside and hit it now. Tucked it and made the quick decision. That's what you want to see out of your senior quarterback, isn't it? Quick decisions, maintain the offense. Coach Williams asked a lot of his quarterback. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Another quick screen. Get your athletes in space and let them make plays. I tell them, hey, man, get the ball out quick, real quick, man. So, Akeem Cobb, man, so he did a great job catching that ball, making guys miss. I really thought he was going to be tackled there, the initial contact. He got past that, made another guy miss, and took it down for the first down to move the sticks. AC on Cobb, the top returning receiver in this Tiger attack. 30 receptions last year in the regular regular season for 602 yards and six touchdowns. Anytime the Tiger offense is out there on the field, he is a threat to score. Ball on the ground. Fumble snap. You're Fumble gonna to see snap. that. Seminole lives to see another down, man. You're gonna see that early in the season. You hate to see it if you're down in the red zone, though. Definitely, man. When you're right there basically at the finish line and you give it up. Uh, I think it was just a little bit of communication when it came to the quarterback. Uh, again, he's in shotgun, and those type of things simply happen. He's putting the guy in motion, and he probably said something to him, and the center took that as go. You know, I've actually learned that, Billy, through this deal, man, where some words sound like go, and they rhyme, man, and these centers get confused. So you got to be careful with your terminology. Luke Record takes the field for his second Series, outside handoff. I'm telling you, Jones has a swarming defense. Hey guys, this is Coach West here at D1 Training, Dr. Phillips. Nowadays, being a good athlete isn't enough to be successful in your sport. You gotta keep up with your speed training, your strength training, your skills training, making sure you're eating healthy, staying flexible, staying mobile, but most importantly, getting good grades. We gotta stay eligible enough to be out in the field to compete. When it comes to getting better here at D1 Training, you pick the goal, we help you get there. Come in, let's get started. The thing I realize about punts, the best thing you can do is catch the ball. But once it starts rolling, I mean, it's another 10, 15, 20 yards just off of it rolling, man. As the Tigers take the field with 3.55 remaining in the first quarter, this is their third possession in Seminole territory. The second one they've drive started in Seminole territory. You know if you're Coach Williams, you're like, we've got to put points and capitalize on this field position. Our defense is doing what we need them to do. We need to now begin to put points on the board. Calvez with a quarterback draw right up inside, and this is what he can do. He puts pressure. If you want to try to drop into coverage, the Seminoles are playing quarters coverage right there. 
if you want to drop into coverage and your linebackers are going to try to get space and take away that second level, he can hurt you. A little quarterback draw action. He's, like I said, he, it used to be 10 on 11. Now it's a truly 11 on 11 so far as the quarterback play, man. These guys can only not only throw the ball, but they can use their feet, man. They become really dangerous. Timing route here to the ninth, to the near sideline. What a route. Derek Rogers. 6'2", 175 pounds. He really stepped on the scene in the spring. People compared him to Peter Warwick with a 70-yard catch and brilliant dazzling run for a touchdown against West Orange High School. Immediately picked up offer, an offer from Lane Kiffin the next day after Coach Kiffin saw that. Little go route back to the sideline. Yeah, man. A little a go curl. Back. Yeah, look, and with the best part, the quarterback – a little bit of shift in his – oh, my goodness. Hello. Mama. Marvin Brown, Mama. sophomore defensive back. Mama, that man at the door again. That's all I know, man. Look here. It is, that was a major hit right there. Great awareness by the Seminole defense. <laughs> Tigers are in a bunch look, which you always got to account for that quick, quick screen, bubble screen. Seminole was prepared, as they always are on defense. And one of the things in watching Coach's Lodge, Coach Lodge's defenses through the years, if you're going to hit them, you have to hit them with big plays. It is so difficult. They're so well coached. They're always fast and physical. It's very difficult to drive the length of the field against Seminole High School. Yeah, because they have a defense that, like I said, they have been but don't break. You better walk us all the way down, and eventually you're going to make a mistake. In any play just like that, they can create a negative play. But outstanding Calvez to his right uh, evades the pressure from once again, 44, Charles Green. Finds his receiver. The Tigers receivers do an excellent job always working back to their quarterback when he's scrambling. Sets up a third and short after a gain of nine. Right, third and short right here. This would be a great time for Coach Elijah Williams to see the heart of his team. Put it in the running back's hand. We're going straight ahead. Let's see what you got. Bunch. Here we go. Inside zone away from the bunch. First down. Dequan Harris, the ball carrier. Sticks are moving. Harris it will set up a first down. Tiger. First down. Yeah. Ball looks like it's actually they Tigers. are setting now these sticks the down, zone. so it's first and goal from about the 10 yard line from our vantage point. Yeah, and, and again, like I said, that was a great call. Just sometimes you got to do a, a gut check on your team and find out where they are. Antonio Rucker plays the wing. Touchdown. No, oh, just short. Just short. Maybe about the uh, one yard line. They go back to the inside Three zone. And the describe for us where the inside zone is designed to hit because the last play he stayed to the play side. That time he bent it back. Explain why that why coaches teach their running backs to do that. Yeah, so there's three things that happen on the inside zone, right? So you're either going to bend it, bounce it, or you're going to uh, uh, bang it, right? And so what happens is initially you want to kind of cut it back, but if that's taken away, you just hit it straight ahead. Right here, he's going to definitely take this straight ahead. Pow Maybe power. quarterback keep it. There you go. Same play, same result. Started right, bent it back behind his center. Good movement in the middle of that offensive line. The Tigers strike first here. Take the lead six to nothing with 52.3 seconds left in the first quarter. Yeah, and, and like I said, those inside zones, they are designed to cut back. It's really made the defense to kind of flow a little bit one way, and you just cut it back and slice through them, man. So that's huge. We do not have rosters for either team tonight. So, unfortunately, we cannot give you the name of the kicker for the Jones High School Tigers right now. But he does convert, putting Jones High School up 7 to nothing. Maxion Cobb with the extra point. Key plays on that drive. Two beautiful plays by the senior quarterback, Calvez. He hit, he hit his young receiver, Derek Rogers, on that little go curl back to the sideline. They get the corner thinking deep. It's all timing, balls out as Rogers is coming out of his break. Huge first down there, and then that scramble play. Yeah, that very first throw that he made to keep the sticks going, the most beautiful part about that play was the subtle movement in the pocket to keep himself alive to deliver that ball, man. Made a very subtle sh shuffle to the left. Got him, bought him just about a Let's millisecond go, just so he could deliver the ball with ease, could see the lane. Perfect. Receiver did a great job catching the ball, made a Shout great spin move, 
to go ahead and get into the to make the first down. But he really moved that corner. Seminoles playing zone coverage. That corner's got eyes on Calvis the whole time. And Calvis' presence back there in the pocket made the corner feel the pressure going deep with the speed mm -hmm. of his receiver, which opened up that comeback along the sideline. It did. As corners, you're typically taught the longer he has the ball, the deeper the route, right? So he held the ball a little bit longer, and it, like I said, the receiver did a great job breaking that route off, and he driving that ball into his chest, man, so he makes sure he catches it. 14-yard route back to 12. Cobb with the kick on the return, number one for Seminole, trying to hit it up inside, bounces it outside. That's one thing that's very difficult to do against anybody on the Jones kickoff coverage team. To try to beat them to the edge. If they stay in their lanes, that, that's problematic. They stay in their lanes, but guess what? They got a few erasers out there, man, in the sense of meaning they got some athletic dudes that if there's a mistake made, they can erase the problem with their speed and, and athleticism. And Jones is loaded with talent when it comes to that. The size up front. Just look at the disparity between the Seminole offensive front and the Jones Tiger defensive front. Both teams feature a lot of talented, skilled players. Mm. I'm telling you, coming in, the matchup. And I mentioned this in the spring when we were talking about Daytona Beach Mainland. Yeah, man, like I said, they, they, they're loaded. They're going to be in the Tiger District, and a game like that's going to be a, be one in the trenches. Yes, it will, man. And, and the Jones defensive front seven, they'll show up and play anybody anywhere. Anywhere, and they get to the football. That's the, that's the biggest part about Jones defense. They're punishing because they get to the football. I want you to think about it. They are The Seminoles are barely averaging a yard per play. Oh, he dropped it. Great coverage, right? So great coverage again by the some, by, by the Jones defense. I uh, can't see the young man's number, but had it right in his hand, right? Ends up dropping it by going down to the ground. Quarterback just actually should not have thrown that ball, but he felt the pressure coming from those defensive linemen. And he said, Coach, you get it out of my hands. I'm putting it in his. And the Seminoles have a new quarterback, Carson Sicarios Lasky, the sophomore that they have high expectations for, really lit it up in the seven-on-seven -seven circuit this summer. Really exciting to watch the quarterback battle between Sekirios Lasky and Luke Rucker unfold. They have not made a decision on who the starter is going to be. I have a feeling the performance of each of these young men is going to go a long way to determine who starts next week. Exactly. Now we're in man coverage right here from Jones. This is going to be big. Quarterback. Oh, wow. You said after a big hit, the Tigers like to celebrate with their – too many of them celebrating after that sack. And on third and nine, which would get the Seminoles off the field, I think we're going to see an unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah, you get an unsportsmanlike automatic first down here. So they're, they're not necessarily a drive killer. They, uh, uh, Seminole gets the opportunity to start that drive over. As they say back in grade school, you get a do-over. So they're going to get a chance to do over this uh, set, man, and, and we're going to see. But I don't think Jones' defense is worried about it. You can see him right now. As the young guys say, they swag. They got a lot of they got a lot of swag going right now, man. So um, it's just what it is, man. So these guys are ready to play, and they're starting to play some man press defense. Well, that was the last play of the first quarter. So I'm curious to see will there be one on time down? It does not look like that. They are sending the Tigers to the sideline, and will Personal shift foul, ends of the field. All right, at the end of quarter number one here at Jones High School, it's the Tigers seven, the Sanford Seminoles zero. We're going to send it to commercial right now. Statewide coverage from the Panhandle to Central Florida to Broward and Miami-Dade down to the Keys. All 22 sports from football, girls and boys basketball, softball, soccer, lacrosse, baseball, even swimming and track. Shows and live streaming broadcasts on various spectrums. Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick and on demand 24-7 seven days a week, only on BSN.
Southout Tigers, Jones High School timeout. As we return to action, it was an unsportsmanlike conduct on the Jones Tiger defense. Take it back to commercial. Oh, here we go. So we're going to continue on right here. A little confusion. We're at new. This is our kickoff classic, too, between our production crew and Kyle and I. So there was, as I was saying, there was a penalty on the Tigers for excessive celebration. But since it was dead ball, the 15 yards was not enough to pick up the first down. It's fourth and five. So the Seminoles thought it was a first down. So since it's fourth down now, they elected to call timeout to discuss this further. Would not be surprised to see the punt team step out on the field. No, definitely. I would not be surprised to see the punt team. Like I said, you're sitting right now currently at your 35-yard line. That wouldn't be great for you right now because Jones, even though they have not scored, well, they did score, but they have the momentum offensively. Hopefully this returner moves up a little bit. He's, the punter does have the win at his face. Uh, he's probably been averaging about 20 yards right now. So, uh, Kale Tomlin in the kick for Sanford for Seminole High School, the junior. Jones appears like they're going to try to go get this one. Let's see. No. That was kick safe all along. They were just making sure they had the edges so there could be no fake. Once again, though, the returner steps away and lets it roll. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, Billy. It's so very important to catch the ball. Even if you're up there, catch it. They just lost 10 yards of production right there just by letting it roll. Uh, like I said, that punt went 20 yards, but ended up being a 35-yard punt. So as the Tigers get ready to take the field for their fourth possession with 11.30 and rolling here in the second quarter, we just mentioned a little while ago the Tigers, with the talent that they have, their mentality this season coming into 2021 is anybody, anywhere, anytime, just let us go. And if you look at their schedule, they will start out next week hosting Dr. Phillips right across the street in Camping World Stadium, a game you and I are excited to be on the call for. I'm super excited, man. We're going we're gonna to see what it's all about, man. Again, two powerhouse programs here in the Orange County area. And people in Central Florida have been begging for this matchup between Coach Wells' Panthers and Coach Williams' Tigers for years, and we're finally going to see it materialize. Yeah. Seminole with a sack on first down of Calvin, of Calvez. Yeah, great sack right there. Again, one thing I have to say about Seminole, I've said it earlier, they do a great job staying in their passing lanes. You can see right there that Calvez was looking. I, he didn't know where to And Calvez is limping off the field. We are going to most likely see Dylan Wade, the senior, excuse me, the junior transfer at quarterback from Ocoee High School. Yeah. He is the backup to Calvez for the Tigers. Yeah, it looks like he got rolled up a little bit. Like I said, it's about four guys Seven on that down. tackle. A lot of bodies hitting the floor. A lot of bodies going everywhere. So those ankles actually get rolled up, man, if you don't get down quick enough. How many times do you see that new quarterback into the game? Nerves, center puts it. It is catchable, but that's a tough catch. School will soon be back in session, and Wildcat has the styles that will keep you in fashion. Brands like Lacoste, G-Star, Aku, and many more. We have great deals on name brand tees starting at $20, shorts at $30, and shoes as low as $34.99. Need some accessories to make your outfit pop? We've got hats and BB Simon belts. Make sure to use code 41 at checkout to receive a 10% discount. See you at the Wild Side. I was talking with J.C. Carnahan before the game from the Orlando Sentinel, and he's followed the Tigers. And I mentioned, I said, what do you think? The Tigers only returned six starters on defense. And he says, they are loaded in their underclass. That was a sophomore that just picked that off. Number 23, James Chenault. As always, J.C. Carnahan with his finger on the pulse of Central Florida football. Calvis with a little inside zone, and they try to hit Anthony Rucker up the seam in the middle of that defense, taking advantage of safeties coming up on the run and just missed it. Yeah, he just missed it, man. It was actually, the ball was just a little flat. If you would have put just a little air and let your guy run up under, it was no middle of the field safety. So let him go out there and just make an athletic play. It didn't have to be a perfect pass. Uh, but that, those are learning things, right? It's on tape now. You actually get a chance to see and know how to just put a little touch on it. Rucker gets a break. This play, Jalen Pittman comes on the field. 
to spelling. Little bootleg action to the Seminole sideline. Outstanding containment once again. We have seen the Seminoles defensive ends play great gap responsibility early on here in this ball game. Yeah, and, and in those plays right there, when you do boot patterns or rollouts, right, you know automatically you're outside of the tackle box, right? So what does that mean? If it's not there, throw it away. Live to see another down. Instead, you lose approximately 10 yards on that play just because in your mind kind of had a, a, a shutdown of what do I do? You're there, it's not there, throw it away. And quarterbacks always have on a bootleg a release out into the flat, and if it's covered downfield, you got to give it out or just throw it away for the incomplete. Third and long here, Calvis hits the top of his drop, tries to hit the timing route once again. They had success on it earlier, running that little go curl on the far sideline. That time better coverage, pressure in Calvis's face. Three and out right there. Three and out, man, but I have to say this. Uh, Seminole has done good on defense, but I have to say Jones has had some self-inflicting wounds, man, just by doing a couple of things that they will definitely learn uh, here in these next four days of practice next week, getting rid of the football, protecting the football, those type of things. First down was the key play there. It could have been a touchdown. Instead, it was an incomplete pass, and from that point forward, the Tigers went backwards. Definitely. They started on the Seminoles' 42-yard line. They are back now on their own 47-yard line. Outstanding play by the defense in white. I'm not sure what Jones' mascot is, but, Lord, it should be the orange C. I can tell you that. Those guys can get to the football, and they can get to the football in a hurry. And I'm looking at them. These are the younger guys. These aren't the top dudes right here. These are the young pups that Coach Elijah Williams is getting ready for the following seasons coming up, getting their jitters out. I've been in these games, Coach. I know what it's expected. So when my number is called to be the starter, I'm ready to go. Earning reps on the special teams as the backups or the reserves. That was Rafael Ray, number 59, first on the scene. Junior, 6'4", 220 pounds. Long snapper, Coach. You're not allowed to put your hands on him. He's got a free shot in high school, man. He can take straight off. Now, once he gets beyond, he puts his head up. You can go ahead and take care of him, but you can't hit him initially, man. Luke Rucker back into the action. At quarterback here with 6.45 in the second quarter. It's interesting looking at this. I'm, as, I'm, as I'm sitting here kind of analyzing Seminole, I'm saying to myself, they're kind of conservative, right, in the sense of they, they follow the, their, I'm looking at a pattern that's happening here, a little inside zone, this, that, and other. And so I don't know if Coach is taking this game and scripting it in the sense of saying, this is what I want to see. Not necessarily worried about winning the game, but I want to kind of see what we look like against a great opponent with this kind of matchup. Fake the inside zone. Little tunnel screen here to the sideline going backwards. Tigers knocked it out, but the official here on the sideline is saying the ball was down already. It was second and eight. Look at the speed. They they quickly recover from the inside zone fake away from the play and beat the offensive lineman to the blocks back here into the boundary. Yeah, they got an RPO screen deal going, huh? <laughs> That's football these days. Defensive coordinators, you, you got to plan for everything and teach your kids how to interpret what's happening in front of them to decipher. Because offensive linemen are running, run blocking, quarterbacks throwing it. Yeah. Third and eight, three receivers to the top of the screen, tight end here into the boundary, tight end releases, four men into the route, inside screen to the tailback. Little check down right over the center, hoping the linebackers get out into coverage. But <laughs> 77 in wide is pointing. I don't know if there's a penalty on the flag or he wants Coach Lodge to go for it on fourth and four, but after five series now, it's hard for me to remember a play that has picked up at least three yards. And as an offensive quarter, you wanna, hey, three yards, especially on first down, three to four yards, let's get ahead of the sticks. And so much of the action tonight, it's no gain or negative plays by the Tigers on defense. Yeah, man, it's the relentless pressure from the defense, especially the front four, and they may be bringing a fifth guy here or there. But the front four are killing it right now. The Tigers finally move their return man up, but he backs away from it. They did put him closer to the punter because every punt tonight has been short, but as soon as it was kicked, he started retreating. Yeah, luckily, you know, he got the bounce where it kind of just died when it bounced, but he's got to be able to kick the ball. 434 remaining in the action. We're going to send you to commercial, ladies and gentlemen.
This is Sports Threat, and this is the new free Sports Threat app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes, where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure. Official has marked the ball for action. The snap to Calvez. Quick little hitch here into the boundary. And a four-yard gain goes for nine. Actually, with a spot, looks like it's a first down. Pass completed to Derek Rogers. I tell guys all the time, Billy, that's the most underrated throw in football, right? It's a five-yard throw, but look, got him 13 yards, man. Confidence throw, easy to throw, and it builds confidence in the quarterback. And that's the first one I've seen all night from Jones. Blitz coming up top from the Sam linebacker by the Knowles. Number nine, he gets home. Yeah, again, they're standing with the inside zone. I have to say, Jones' offensive line has to create a little bit more push. They're initially coming off with some power, but there's no drive. They're not reestablishing the line of scrimmage here. So they're going to have to keep going. I see a lot of guys standing up. you got to keep driving. Gain of two. got to be fast as the color commentator with the Tigers on offense, don't you? They don't <laughs> yes, give sir. you time to talk. They will check to the sideline here on second and eight. That was the first time we've had a chance to call the outstanding senior linebacker Cam Moore for the Seminoles, the leader of this Seminole defensive unit. Again, I'm going to talk real fast. So what they, <laughs> No, but seriously, man, they, again, staying with the inside zone. Offensive line, when they put this on tape, they're going to show they're going to have to dominate these guys, especially with the, the schedule that they have going. They are going to have to dominate these guys up front, man, in order to get the running game going. Well, they have the size, as you can tell, to lean on people. And even though they're struggling right now, the, yard, the, the rushing plays aren't popping. You keep leaning on a smaller defense late into the second half, those two-yard plays are going to start to hit. Yeah, again, here's another thing. So I see Jones running. They just ran a little quick uh, screen here. Unfortunately, it's to the short side of the field. A lot of people don't realize, even uh, the people watching tonight, don't realize that the hash marks are a lot wider in high school than you see in the NFL. So what happens is you create more people in a smaller space. So it's very hard to run screens where there's a lot of people in such a small space. But they're yeah. going forward on fourth and uh, seven. Little check with me to try to get the Seminoles to tip their hand. Two linebackers coming. Coach Williams saw that. He is now dialing up a play to attack that blitz. Will Coach Lodge stay in it or will he get out of it? The chess match between two great coaches here in Central Florida, both head coaches. Coach Lodge has not lost a game at Seminole High School. Undefeated. The Seminoles have not lost a game since November 2019 when they Suffered an embarrassing loss 20 to nothing at the hands of the Apopka Blue Darters deep in the state playoffs. A loss that they would go back and get sweet revenge last year against the Darters on their home field. But Coach Lodge, undefeated as a coach, Coach Williams, all he's done since he's taken over for the Tiger program is average 10 wins a season. I mean, you can't ask for more in high school, right? I mean, 10 wins, and, and, and look at the schedules he's been been playing year in and year out since he's been here. He's always, you know, challenged his players, always challenged the program. Then we're not going out here and just get a cake schedule, man. We're going to play some dogs. He's 50-9 and nine in his five years <laughs> at the reins of the Tiger program. I love it, man, and that's beautiful because um, – it shows, man, that the tradition here at Jones is huge. Um, as I'm looking through the crowd, I can see some of the alumni, some of the past years, and and uh, these people want to see those things, man. They really want to see those type of games, playing big time games, uh, challenging games, week in and week out. And Coach Elijah Williams has kept that alive here. Tiger pride, Tiger pride, Tiger pride. And it, it, their losses the last five years have come in the playoffs against some of the top teams in the state. They lost the state championship two years ago to Miami Northwestern. Last year, Tampa Jesuit ended their season down in Tampa. They had two seasons in which Cardinal Gibbons came up here and beat them. And you know Cardinal, Cardinal Gibbons well from South Florida. And then John Wilkinson's Cocoa Beach, or yeah. excuse me, Cocoa Tigers sure, sure. won a state championship. And unfortunately, Coach Williams early on in his tenure here at Jones High School ran into that stellar program that Coach Wilkins had over there at Coco at that during that period. Yeah, man, I mean, it's exciting. If you think about it, he's 50 and 9. He's 
50 and 9. And what's happening is those nine losses are happening in the state program, in the state playoffs, and in the state championship game, man. So, you know, to Coach Wood, to Coach Elijah Williams' point, man, he's doing a great job right there. I know that these these Jones Tigers want to, uh, they they really want a state championship, right? But they're not far off from knocking on the door. It's standing room only here at Jones High School, on both sides of the field. It is a smaller stadium. But anybody that supports these two programs and these two teams, especially Sanford, they travel well. The Seminoles from Sanford High School. Yeah, man, it's great. like I say, it's great to see, man. You see all types of generations. You see generations. You see generations from way back all the way to the current students, man. And that's what you want when you look into the stands as a high school at a high school game. I mean, you see from a ninth grade all the way up to people who graduated in the class of 1962. You know what I mean? That's awesome. That's that's the atmosphere you want. Well, across that far sideline, there's some disagreement going on. Now there's another flag down on the field with 232 remaining. The ball is going to continue to be marched by the officials towards the Seminoles goal line. But when you start talking about just the city of Sanford, Bow Key rhymes with low key. It's a way of life. It's a way of life, it's, man. It, it's, it's a saying, it's a term, it's who they are. It's important historical significance to the black community in the Sanford area. Mm -hmm. One of the oldest communities in all of the United States in the entire country. And it's with great pride that they wear that. They'll even don uniforms. They have a black set of uniforms with bokeh across the chest. And it's a source of pride. It's who they are. It's where they come from. And, and it means something different. That's awesome, man. I, I, to that community. Just, I just learned something, man. So the first time I'm hearing that, so it's actually pretty interesting that you say that. Because there are a lot of small pockets here in the state of Florida that have things like that, right? Um, you know, you talk about things like, say, Eatonville, for example. You know, so you talk about places like Eatonville. Um, 232 remaining right here before the Tigers take their next step. We're going to step away for a commercial. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. After the timeout, it'll be first and 10 from the 20 yard line for Jones High School. While the officials waiting to set the ball into play, Tigers come out with two receivers. Now, Rucker goes up top, three receivers. That has to be the biggest slot receiver in Central Florida football. <laughs> and now he comes in motion to get back into the tackle box to be the lead blocker at the point of attack. I have to say this. I've been talking a lot about Jones' defense swarming to the ball, but let me tell you something. The Seminole defense and, La and Latravius Boyd, they're not playing around either, man. They're getting to the ball, and you just said this either. Jones' offense has not really solidified a running game. To have the size that they have over Sanford Seminole's defensive line, they have not popped big one. I don't think we have one over uh, maybe 8 to 10 yards yet. So that's big, man, for Sanford. That was Latravius Boyd on the carry for pickup of a long three, the senior running back. Little inside handoff, flipping it back for the reverse to number four, Jalen Williams. Man, number four for Sanford came down and he cleaned it up because if not, he would have turned the corner and definitely would have gotten the first down, man. So that's, I'm telling you, man, I'm, I'm, I am, this is a defensive matchup, right? And a lot of fans out here don't like seven zeros or seven seven scores, but as a defensive coach myself, I am loving this deal, man. This is awesome because you get to see guys playing uh, uh, lights out football, man. I love it. Third and seven with 124 on the clock. Most likely out of field goal range for the Tigers. So looking at two downs, most likely. Trying the tunnel screen into the boundary up top. The lineman trying to get out ahead of that screen. 
Started a little early. Cam Moore, the leader of the Seminoles defense, is pointing. Take him back. Cam Moore's outstanding player. Gus Malzahn is really starting to lay a foundation in making Central Florida footbed football the backyard of the Knights, a critical element of his recruiting plan. Cam Moore committed when he had multiple offers from big name schools. UCF comes in to this football season ranked 24th in the country. Their recruits locally, they've struggled. Oftentimes they've overlooked their own backyard and gone out of the area. Coach Malzahn is not doing that. Cam Moore, Nakai Martinez, the outstanding quarter for the darters at Apopka High School. And once again, you keep saying it, they're not as flashy on defense as the Tigers, but they are sound in what they do. You were talking the reverse earlier. Backside pursuit, there's always a safety responsible for that reverse back to stay home before you chase. We saw it on the reverse for a short gain. They try that play right there. Everybody is gap integrity. They're sound in their scheme. And this is what I was getting back to. If you don't hit big plays against them, it's hard to move the ball consistently. And you know, you, you, like you said earlier, it is hard to move the ball, all of that kind of stuff, man. But they are bulky defense based on what you told me, man. They are to it. Everybody, like I said, they keep the gap integrity. They keep their pass lanes. They keep their rush lanes, all of that type of stuff. Linebackers know when to come up and feel. They're taking the right angle on the tackle, you know, attacking the correct shoulder. They've done an excellent job defensively here, man. Like I said, and we're on a timeout right now, but I do want to say this too, Billy. But we had 2.6 seconds before the half, so Jones may just toss one up here. This is uh, going to be a shot play. It's going to be a shot play, but I would have to say this. If Jones wants to be successful this season, and I know this is just a kickoff, but I'm just making an observation. If Jones wants to be successful, they're going to have to start establishing drives where they can keep it going and not in, and, and, and give themselves self-inflicted wounds, man. Because, you, like you say, they, you start off with DP and you end up the first five with IMG. And in, in between, it better not be OMG because it can be tough, man. We were talking about IMG being the mythical national champions last year. Jones will travel to face them. But you want to talk about good Central Florida football is top 100 teams in the nation, according to High School Football America. Two of the top teams in the entire country are right here in front of us this evening. The Seminole finished the, the season last year. Just outstanding winning a state championship were recognized for their performance. The Tigers were not too far behind. Edgewater was right there, all within the top 80 programs in the nation. Yeah, I mean, C Central Florida's got excellent football, excellent football. Here's your shot play going to the receiver, but for the second time, just receiver's not looking for the ball. Yeah, that's your shot play, man, for the half, just to take a shot. Uh, I, I don't think the I don't think Kevin did a good job putting it up there and let him fight for it. He just put it out there, lob it up there, let us see if you get a 50-50 ball out of that. All right, that will do it for the first half of action here at Jones High School. Tigers 7, the Seminoles 0. We will head for a commercial break and halftime and be back to present for you the second half. When you're a star high school student athlete, you compete tirelessly on the court and in the classroom to achieve your one dream of playing in college. Top schools recruit you and even offer you a scholarship. Then senior year hits and you find out that the class you took actually doesn't count. Your GPA is .25 off or your SAT score is 10 points too low. All because your counselor, your coach, and your parents couldn't make sense of the rules. And by the time you find out, it was too late to catch up. Boom, game over. 
Honest Game is the clear pathway for getting in. We automate the process so the student, the parent, the coach, the counselor, and the college all get real-time eligibility updates. With Honest Game, everyone knows what to do before it's too late. In the last 20 years, total athletic scholarship money has grown from $2.5 million to over $3 billion. With the NCAA on the verge of allowing student athletes to earn money on their likeness, recruits and college coaches will more than ever need to know their eligibility status. Learn more at honestgame.com and let the dream live on. There's not a lot of places you can go where exactly what they put on their signs is exactly what you get in your food. So many people think that the way I eat and the way I train and a lot of things I do in life are because of sports. I want to be as healthy 50 years from now because every day that God gives me, I want to make the most of that. Clean juice, healthy, fast, organic food. Hey everybody, Charlie Bales from CB Supplements here. We are your collagen company, specifically your multi-sourced collagen company. We're the first and only NSF certified multi-source collagen on the market. Our product helps athletes recover and strengthen their joints, but our product also has a bunch of other awesome benefits. It can help you sleep, it can decrease overall inflammation throughout your body, it can help you with your digestive system, and lastly, it can give you the hair, skin, and nails of the gods. Check us out on our website, cbsupplements.com, and follow us on all the socials at CB Supplements. School will soon be back in session, and Wildcat has the styles that will keep you in fashion. Brands like Lacoste, G-Star, Aku, and many more. We have great deals on name brand tees starting at $20, Shorts at 30 and shoes as low as $34.99. Need some accessories to make your outfit pop? We've got hats and BB Simon belts. Make sure to use code 41 at checkout to receive a 10% discount. See you at the wild side. A year like no other. In 2021, 2021. This is for 2021. They broke the glass. It's all say a prayer. The Delta variant. Biden is currently attending the G7 summit by the Chinese government. The ocean caught fire. To the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do. Hi, I'm Angel Krausen and I'm with the A-Team of Charles Ruttenberg Realty. We're located in delightful downtown DeLand and we service all of Central Florida. Our team is here to serve you for all of your real estate needs, whether you're buying, selling, or looking to invest. There is no time like the present to sell your existing home and buy your new one with the A-Team. Call me, Angel Krausen, so the A-Team can deliver your dream today. Max Muscle started all the way back in 1991 with the simple philosophy that we are consumers first. We had a desire to make sure that whatever we made, we would take ourselves. We love what we do. We were the first franchise system as a retailer to put certified nutrition coaches in every single store. We practice what we preach, we live it every day, and that shows through when we go into product development, we want to make sure the products that we're bringing to market are going to be products that are just as effective for you as they are for us. Statewide coverage from the Panhandle to Central Florida to Broward and Miami-Dade down to the Keys. All 22 sports from football, girls and boys basketball, softball, soccer, lacrosse, baseball, even swimming and track. 
shows and live streaming broadcasts on various spectrums. Roku, Apple TV, Fire Stick, and On Demand. 24-7, seven days a week, only on DSN. The best part of my job is helping people realize not only their dreams, but also their potential. My name is Dan LaForest, and I am a wealth advisor with Security Financial Management. No matter how good you may be at a skill, it's always important to have a coach to help you refine those skills and game plan for the next challenge. Helping clients realize the process will give them the confidence of knowing that we have taken the appropriate steps to protect themselves and their families. Whether you're starting up a new company, face managing the affairs of a deceased loved one, or need assistance drafting a will or trust, finding the right attorney to help guide you on a journey can be daunting. Here at Pineda Law, we are here to help. Attorney Matt Pineda concentrates in estate planning, probate, business formation, and business law. Located in beautiful Heathrow, Florida, Pineda Law proudly serves Orange County and Seminole County. Contact Pineda Law for a free consultation. Hey, this is Sports Threat, and this is the new free Sports Threat app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure to college coaches. Get clout. And get certified with a check mark that will change your life. Join the squad. Download the Sports Threat app today. Sports Threat, it's always free. C19. We are back right before the kickoff of the second half here at Jones High School with the Tigers leading 7 0, hosting the Seminoles from Seminole High School in Sanford, Florida. The Tigers won the toss in the first half and elected to take the ball, so they will be kicking off here, kicking from north to south to the Seminoles. I could tell watching you the entire first half. You had a smile on your face. It was that defensive coordinator as you briefly, you, you let it out. <laughs> you were enjoying this. Let me give you some stats right now. Okay. On defense, the Tigers have held the Seminoles to five total yards of offense. Yes. The Seminoles are three for five through the air for 14 yards with two interceptions. The Tigers defense has two sacks against that Seminoles offense. On the ground, when you add in two sacks for a loss of 19 yards, the Seminoles have minus nine yards rushing at this point. As the Seminoles offense is set to receive this kick and take this second half to start the second half. Several times, one of the Seminoles' best playmakers, senior defensive back. You're going to have a flag on the Jakari play. Jakari Henderson side. trying to bring it across the field against this Tigers kick coverage team. Flag down. Lights on the deal. Yeah, one thing I can tell you, Billy, man, on kickoff returns, man, if, you, if it's not designed to go across the field, it's very hard to take it 53 and a third yard across the field of guys on block because that's not the blocking pattern, man. So I always tell guys on kickoff, get follow the blocking scheme as quick as you can, get vertical, and let's get down, let's go live, see another down. Man. There's no horizontal wedge on, kick, on no, kickoff, sir. is there? No, sir. <laughs> it's between now, the it, edges up the middle. Now, if it's Deion Sanders, Devin Hester, well, then those throw, guys, hey. Throw, I, the, throw the script out, okay? Yeah, who, it turns into Sandlot at that point. Find yeah. somebody in the opposite color and go make contact with him. Yeah, and man. let him do his magic. Devin Hester, I know one of your favorites. Hey, one of my, hey man, who am I, man? <laughs> Luke Recker will take the field for the Seminoles at quarterback to start the second half. If you're Woody Cox as the offensive coordinator over there, five total yards of offense. What do you do here against this stout Tiger defense? in the second half. We're going to see the adjustments right off the bat. Yeah, we'll see them. It's going to happen in the third quarter again because of what it is. You're going to see probably a lot of play action. There it is in the go ball. Great catch by him, man. 
But again, you got to be able to take the top off. It's cover three. They know what Jones is running. You know what I mean? So guess what? We're going to take the top off, and we're going to see what it is. You're probably going to get a lot of play action because they've been setting it up all first half. Darren Lawrence, 6'2", 190, three-star athlete, according to 247 Sports, with the deep ball down Jones's sideline. First time the Seminoles have crossed midfield into Tiger territory, and it looks like they're trying to pick up the pace as well. Quick hitter over here once again going back to Lawrence into the boundary. Again, back to the hitch, man. Quick balls right now. Love it. Guess what? All, you're at uh, second and six already. We've seen both teams do it for plus yardage on first down. That is just, it's a running play with a quick hitter into the boundary. It's dealer's choice if you're the quarterback. Like it, take it. We'll live with the decision. If you see off coverage, take it every time because it sets up second and four. And look at the pace now. They're getting off the ball quicker. They're going on first sound. And we've got a penalty coming in late from the white cap, the head official. Little extracurricular going on between one of the receivers and somebody in the secondary of Jones. And now that is against Seminole. That's going to be a momentum buster if I ask anything because, you know, you go there, even though it's a dead ball foul, uh, regardless, you're losing yards, man, and the momentum was heading your way. So if it's against Seminole, that would be a shame on this drive. If it's against Jones, then slap on the wrist because that's bad. You're giving them even more momentum. We spoke before the game. This game doesn't count. But to each of those kids down there with <laughs> the communities that they come from, everything. If you're on a field, a court, anything, you're competing and everything matters. That was really the first time we got offsetting unsportsmanlike penalties. That's the first time we've seen somebody on the Seminoles offense try to get after a Tiger defender. We have, man. Like I said, it was probably a little, you know, it was a little bit of pushing and shoving between both parties, so they, they end up making an offsetting, uh, which basically is a wash for those that don't know, and we're going to play this first down here, man. But like you said, even practices, if you practice against somebody else, it's competition. Rory Thomas, the junior running back at tailback, offsets to the left, sidecar left of Luke Rucker. Lucker, Rucker's made his offensive checks in outside zone. Starting to get some movement now against that Tiger defense. Thomas on the carry for about three. Yeah, did a great job off tackle, changing it up a little bit. You don't, Jones is trying to now figure out how do we attack these guys. Most times when you see teams like Jones and they feel the pressure, they're going to start bringing pressure. Right, and so you're going to start seeing some blitz patterns, and this is where Seminole may pop one open After if Bob missed tackle. Up second and seven. Two receivers stacked here to the Jones sideline. Michael Key lined up behind DeAndre Cameron. Mm, 50 50 ball. That's good defense. Cannot look, see the numbers. Going once again to senior Darren Lawrence for the second deep ball. Cannot read with the green numbers on the orange jersey on the far sideline. But the corner play was outstanding. Stayed over the top of the receiver and wedged him into the sideline and had his eyes on the ball the entire play. Yeah, like you say, stayed on top of him, kept him, cut his route short by him slowing down. He has every right to do so. That's not impeding the receiver because you're playing the ball just as well, but he did it strategically. It was great, man, great defense right there, fundamentally sound. Key third and eight right here, not in field goal range. Rucker looks to convert into the boundary. Looks like it's going to be just shy, quick curl route. Once again, they've gone deep to Lawrence twice on this drive, so they hit him acting like he's going deep and then put him back just shy of the sticks. Another good coaching point. On third and eight, though, when you're running a curl, you don't want to run it short of this first down marker, do you? Yeah, you always want to go beyond and come back. Here it is, fourth and one. Do you go straight ahead or do you throw it and get fancy? Inside zone to the left, most likely. Or, oh, hey, they got him. He drew him. Outstanding quarterback coaching. Momentum, man, here's the momentum. It's coming back. Jones has to find a way to either get a big hit right now, either a big breakup, a big pass, uh, uh, or an interception. They have to do something to kill the momentum right now. Seminole, Seminole has it. Seminole most likely with a freeze play right there. Rucker using voice inflection <laughs> to draw an eager defensive end across the ball and get him into the neutral zone. Picks up the first down. 
two receivers here to the Tiger sideline. Single receiver up top. Seminole usually features a tight end. Quick, quick little corner arrow route into the boundary with the tight end. Single receivers running the corner route to clear the secondary out of there. Rucker with a quick hitter into the boundary. So many high school quarterbacks want to continue to hold the ball and look downfield. you got to take what the defense gives you. Rucker showed great maturity on that play. Even though it's only a three-yard play, they're starting to pick up positive yards and stay ahead of the sticks. Exactly. I tell people all the time, you tell them a quarterback all the time, you throw it for two yards and he takes it 80, you got 80 yards reception. You don't have to throw it 80. Quick little bunch set. They come in. Confusion to the secondary. Corner route to the end zone. Had him open, and he's going to wish he had that back. Booker's pass. Yeah, he actually let it go just a tad bit late, and that's why he had to, had to sell it. If he, if he would have thrown that right off the break with that one hitch and throw, he actually because, because the receiver actually had him beat, and he actually tried to lead him a little too far. So if he would have just put it out there, and a lot of times these guys don't realize understanding the angle of the ball is so flat, it's, right, it's moving so fast. Give him a chance. Let your guy go up and fight for it. Woody Cox with a great play call there on second down. The point man in the bunch, they motion back into the bunch. Jones is playing zone. The point runs the corner. The two deeper slot receivers cross, one to the flat, one inside to pick the play side backer to hold him, and you get one-on-one -on, -one on that safety with your best receiver. Good Couldn't man. have drawn up a better play. Twice tonight we've seen great play calls that just have not been connected. One for each team now. Lawrence, a little premature press coverage in his face. He got excited trying to go deep and was early off the ball ahead of the snap. That's going to back him up now to third and 12. Yeah, and they actually, they actually uh, helped Jones out like they were having some communication issues from the defense. Look like they were trying to check out a one and maybe into just a goal line or a zero. Uh, look, the safety was trying to come down on that slot. I think he may have been trying to run that corner route on him again, knowing it was open. Well, one adjustment that Seminole has made is the quarterback is not holding the ball like he did in the first half. He is hitting his drop, and ball is out. He hits the back of his drop. You can see it steps into his throw. Comebacker that time, he did get to the sticks. Once again, though, great matchup up top between Lawrence and the Tiger corner. And the Tiger corner has been up to the challenge twice now, setting up a fourth, and it looks like 13. Yeah, but here's the difference. They're right in the room. I don't know what their field goal game looks like. I don't know if they can kick it. doesn't look like they're making any changes, so they're going for it. I think right here you isolate a guy, throw the 50-50. Maybe you get the P.I. call, which is not an automatic first here in high school, but it's going to be beyond 15 yards, I can tell you that. Uh, it would be a 36-yard so attempt if they were trying it. But Coach Lodge is elected. He's going aggressive. Touchdown, Seminoles. They've been going the deep route, the go route on the corners. So he sets him up, and all that is, I mean, he sets him up, and it's a quick hitter. It's a bang route. A bang eight. A, a yeah. bang eight. The yeah. receiver hits the eight-yard mark and makes the post move. A bang eight is not a post route. It's really a deep slant, and the quarterback knows when that receiver hits the eight-yard mark, he's breaking, and the ball has to be on his hands inside 14 yards. And if you can hit it like that, it is so difficult to defend. The Seminoles answer right here on their first drive coming out of halftime. As they line up for the point after attempt, it is good. And with 7.55 remaining in the third quarter, new life along the far sideline and in the stands. And we're going to take you to commercial before we come back with the rest of this second half. Great play, man. Great play. This is Sports Threat, and this is the new free Sports Threat app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes, where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure to college coaches. Get clout. And get certified with a check mark that will change your life. Join the squad. Download the Sports Threat app today. Sports Threat, it's always free. Back. Yeah, but it was unbalanced, so now they outnumbered them. So they had the actual blocking. But the guys, because you're in cover three, you're never going to get that. Double pass? Yeah, that's why he threw it backwards. And you, you saw that's why it took him so long to get going. 
Remember, he caught it. He was like, uh, and then he just turned it on. It was a slick, but but the thing, the problem with we return with twelve minutes remaining. The fourth quarter sets up here with a fourth and eleven from the Seminoles' twenty-one yard line. You've been talking the bang post, but they've tried the curl action at the stick several times in this down and distance, or this distance at least. Third down and ten, third and eleven. Well, now this is a little longer, so Jones is bringing a lot of pressure. I don't know if you can. can Where's Lawrence, it. number one, in the formation? He's in the slot. He's in number three. He's the number three receiver, and they're going to him across the middle. There it is, seam route. Ruckers just, we were, our, both our eyes were on Lawrence the entire time. He just feathered in behind the linebacker. He wasn't, it wasn't a speed route, it was an excellent route. Because if he's going too fast, he runs on top of that safety. As soon as he cleared the second level linebacker, he started to throttle down, mm -hmm. gave Rucker a window to put it in. And you want to talk about toughness going over the middle when you know you're going to get hit. <laughs> Listen, when they give it out the, swing, the sweet chin music, my man, you know it's coming. You know you're going to play this song. And he took it anyway, and he played right along. Did a great job catching the ball in that traffic, man. And that's why he's ranked how he is. Just a great design of the route, though, and running it at the speed that it needed to be run at. So many times receivers get anxious if they think they're going to get the ball, especially in that situation, and they hurry the route. They rush it, and they run it too fast. And, and here's what's smart about him on the route running, right? It's a single high safety. You're really technically not supposed to throw that ball. But because of, like you said, he knows how to sit in that zone, speed up to get beyond the linebacker, slow down to stay in front of the safety, sit you right in that zone for that ball, man. So he did a great job doing that, man. Quarterback put it right where it needed to be, hand catch, touchdown. Now, how quickly can momentum change in the game of football? All Tigers in the first half, complete dominance. The score should have been greater than seven to nothing. We look up with 11.51 to play, and all of a sudden the Seminoles are leading 14-7. Yeah, like I said, I mean, really to Jones, they had some self-inflicted wounds early in the first half. I mean, they were right there fumbling in the red zone. Uh, interception, I believe, two had two interceptions. I mean, it's just been tough. So um, hopefully they will they can definitely come back. I mean, you're only down by a touchdown. This is high school ball. Any given play, this could be 7 nothing right now. Uh, He's got it. He's got it. So talking about that, he had it, right? But what did he try to do? Get outside, and he started running out of real estate. He had the scene. He had the scene for the, for the touchdown, but he missed it, and he kind of get outside a little bit. And that's the art to kick, to kick return. They have to understand the seams and how lanes work on kick return. Well, we featured the schedule of the Tigers tonight. The Seminoles have a pretty challenging schedule as well. They will head next week down to Sarasota Riverview, which has featured one of the most high-powered offenses in the Gulf Coast region the past two seasons. They will then host North Miami Beach, a team that you're very familiar with, before playing Lyman, and then they'll get into district play against Flagler Palm Coast. They'll travel to Mainland. Shamadad Madonna, mm -hmm. which is a three-time state champ in 2017, 18, and 19. They'll also play Lake Brantley. Little quick pass out here, swing route. And here comes the Tiger speed on display. Outstanding tackle coming across the field from number four from the Seminoles. Andrarius Graham with a great pursuit angle. That's the corner from the far sideline coming across the field and showing speed against a very good Tiger receiver. Or that play would have been even bigger. It was an outstanding catch and run, but you like defense, and that's a corner coming 40 yards across the field at the right angle to make a play against a special playmaker in space Perfect to get him angle. on the ground. That's what you want to do in your pursuit angles. Get him on the ground as fast as possible. If he doesn't do that, it's definitely a touchdown because he had a blocker. Buck sweep into the boundary, and look at that penetration from the right defensive tackle and the right defensive end cleaning up 95 and 33 in white. 95 himself, Preston Watson, we've called his name several times. He's been unblockable. And once they 
He pushed it back and made the buck sweep bubble. And then 33, once again, Lucas Fonseca from the linebacker position was there to clean up. Yeah, they did a great job pursuing to the balls, what they call spill technique. He spills it outside. Again, they're running the buck sweep to the short side of the field. Creates a lot of congestion. A lot of a lot of bodies are flying around. And the sideline becomes the extra defender. Second and 15. New quarterback in the game this time with a deep pass. South Paul. But outstanding. They keep picking on the best corner for the Seminoles. One of the twins, Jakari Henderson. They keep going at him. And I mean, you keep going to the bank and you don't you can't make anything positive happen. You might want to try the other side of the field. Yeah, you, you might want to try that as well as, guess what? Get the ball back into your playmaker's hands. Now you're in a situation, you gain no yards, you're third and 15 right now. Now you either have to run the screen deal or go for the gusto or maybe even run a bang gate, huh? We like those tonight. Do something, but you got to be able to isolate some guys in some form or fashion and take the pressure off of the quarterback. We said they, we said Coach Williams needed to get the ball to A.C. Cobb, the standout senior receiver. They tried at that time, but that was in the double coverage. It was, you know. Safety help over the top. My goodness, let me just say this about Seminole, man. These guys are fundamentally sound. They're making open field tackles. You know, like I said, they don't look flashy. They really don't. I have to say that. Just in it. But let me tell you, they come into play, man. These guys are really coming to play. I really thought he was going to break him down the middle of the field and take it for the first. Great open field tackle by them, man. And that's uh, unusual to see. They've only been in pads for probably two weeks. Mm -hmm. So to step out on the field, and, and contact is limited mm -hmm. early on in the season in practice. So to be able to step out on the field and be perfect in your tackling against elusive ball carriers, very sound, well-coached, fundamentals – Football's about a game of fundamentals, knowing your responsibilities, lining up correctly, and then executing with outstanding technique. And that's what's on display for the defense in white. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, Seminole is tough, man. I have to I have to say that. Uh, right now, Jones has some communication issues with the, uh, I'm going to call him the third string quarterback here and the receiver. And you see a little bit of frustration in him. And this right here is where coaches come in and you start to get your team together and let them know, man, we all learning. All right, don't get frustrated. Stick with the plan. And we're sorry for everybody at home. Number 19 is now at quarterback. We did not receive rosters from either school. The press box did not have rosters. So we cannot speculate. Unfortunately, we cannot call that young man's name and give him the honor that he's due. Mm -hmm. Stepping out there, he's out there giving it his all. Seminole comes back. Luke Rucker successfully guided the Seminoles to two touchdown drives to start the second half. It is. He's not on the field for this drive. They will go back to their sensational sophomore, Sakarius Lasky. But they, they found something they like with quick hitters right inside between the guards. A to A is the way right now for the Seminoles. Right. So to the to the eye of fans today, it looks like the inside zone, but to believe it or not, it's just a straight dive. Uh, it, it's no pro they're blocking is man on man they're doubling at the point of attack and he's just hitting it. when I say A to A is the way I just yeah. mean they're staying in the A gap between the center and both guards they're not looking to get off track they're running a track now they go outside anticipating the Tigers to pinch inside to take that play, play away they try to hit something off tackle but as we've seen so often tonight running outside in the B C D gap it's been nearly impossible. Nearly impossible because, once again, the Tigers are just too fast. They get to the ball. They do a great job uh, getting to the ball. I know that defensive coordinator, Coach Anderson, always I've had a chance to talk with him. He harps on pursuit to the ball. So running away from them is probably not a great idea. Trey Clark, sophomore running back on the carry. And we do see some new personnel. So this is a classic, a kickoff classic. It's a scrimmage. It doesn't count. Coach Lodge is getting new bodies out on the field, even though his kids want to win this game. He wants to win this game. But it's so critical to get all of your kids, your second teamers, your third teamers, to develop that quality depth that you need to make long playoff runs. It's important to get these kids some action and get them on field. Get them on the field and see what they can do against a good program. 
just right off the fingertips. Listen, great throw by the young quarterback. I mean, right off the tip of his fingers, man. You know, you got a, you got a yellow flag here on the play, but, I mean, great way to stay in the pocket. He could feel it collapsing down on him, and he stayed in there, moved in the pocket. I mean, was literally inches off from that. But I'm going to say this about something you just said earlier, Billy. Everybody wants to win this game, but Coach Lodge has an established program. Coach Williams has an established program. You want to win these games because it carries momentum into the season. But because these programs are established, and if you happen to lose it, it's easier to bounce back. These guys have been together for a time. Your staff has been together for a time. So, therefore, you can take those opportunities to get these young guys a chance to get on the field so you can have footage because if the injury bug starts to linger, they've already had some opportunities on the grass. Sekirios Lasky looking for the play call here on fourth and eight. Seminoles getting lined up. We hope you're enjoying the action here this evening on the Varsity Sports Network. We look forward to bringing you all the best action. It's a quick kick from the Sekirios Lasky. But we want to be your home here at Varsity Sports Network. We want to be your home for high school sports in Central Florida, in the Orlando area, the Daytona Beach area. Tune in for all the action. We had outstanding volleyball programming earlier this week at Oviedo High School with some of the top schools in the area. Programs from Dr. Phillips, Trinity Prep, Oviedo, First Academy, outstanding play. We want to be your 24-7 Special spot for high school Jones sports high school and bring it to you with a positive perspective. We have other programming than live action games. Tune in if you're a football fan at heart. Tune in every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock for the Varsity, Grid, the Varsity Gridiron Report. The Florida Gridiron Report, I should say. Kyle, to my left right here is a host. He and Bobby Latmore, our producer tonight, will be hosting... Another show this Wednesday night, airing every Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. We've had some incredible coaching. We love to talk football, and it's not just Central Florida. It's around the entire state of Florida. We've had, co we've had Colin Drafts from Nice High School. We've had Travis Rowland from Daytona Beach Mainland. Kennard Lang coming back. Coach Eric Lodge, Lodge from yeah. Seminole High School. Coco Beach with Coach Snyder. Excuse me, I keep saying Coco Beach. The Coco Tigers. Coco Coach Tigers. Snyder. We've had uh, Coach UCF Phillip Lump, Simpson down Phillip. at uh, Miami and Homestead High School. Brady Ackerman taking over the program and giving us a perspective at Bellevue High School, what it's like to take over a program and start to lay the foundation and the challenges of coming in new. Here's my beautiful play to hitch. It's been good for four to six yards all night. But we love talking football. The Florida Gridiron Report each week is nothing about high school football. Reports from around the state so you can get a sense of the action that's happening across the state of Florida. With featured experts, we've had Larry Bluestein, that is a who's who in recruiting for the state of Florida. Dwight Thomas. Dwight Thomas has been featured with episodes. We've had Chris Doring on the show. We've had Shane Matthews on the show. Two Gator greats. Brian Smith out of the Tampa area that's now covering UCF. With Sports Illustrated, Cam Moore on the outside blitz. He diagnoses that screen. That could be a lateral. And look at Cam Moore. You can see why Gus Malzahn. Coach Lodge says his football IQ and the awareness to sense what is about to take place before it even happens. He was on a blitz but saw the peel action with the bubble and came off his blitz to get in the path of the quarterback, making that a difficult throw, and that's why it was incomplete. And those are the things you're looking for when you're recruiting top players, right? We're not, we want to find the things that are the intangibles, right, things that there's no drill for, there's no coaching for. These are the things that he does as an athlete. That's what you – if you can find 11 guys to play on the field like that, you have a, either a state championship or a national championship or a Super Bowl winning team. And so much emphasis is put on a 40 time on the clock. But you can have a slower 40, but if you play faster on the field like we just saw because you can diagnose things quickly, that cuts your 40 time down and leads to – UCF wanting to recruit him. UCF's come in like we were talking earlier. They've come in. They've had Nakai Mar Martinez, one of the best corners in all of Central Florida from Apopka High School, Jones who you will see you know tomorrow night. And, and but before we can get to the rest of this action, we're going to take a commercial break at this time. There's not a lot of places you can go where 
Exactly what they put on their signs is exactly what you get in your food. So many people think that the way I eat and the way I train and a lot of things I do in life are because of sports. I want to be as healthy 50 years from now because every day that God gives me, I want to make the most of that. Clean juice, healthy, fast, organic food. 10. Key third and 10 right here with a screen into the boundary. They went to the well too many, one too many times. That play worked in the first quarter. Seminoles did not pressure it. They just stayed back, watched the quarterback hit his drop and realized what was happening. Brings out the punter again with 5.59 to play. Tigers are running out of time if they want to get back into this. They have to get a three and out on defense coming up. Yeah, looking at the six minute mark here right at 5.59, it's probably, the Jones will probably have about two more, maybe three possessions depending on how they play on defense. And you know, they gotta be able to score just to tie it and then be, create another score to win this deal. So they are running out of time. They have to establish something. I have to be very honest with you. The running game has kind of sputtered. They had some pieces. They showed something. They've had some good passes, and then it's gone back, whether it be inner, whether it be penalty or, or just self-inflicted wounds or, or whatever. Great punt. Great field. Let's go. Lights on the As so often during a kick return, there's a flag on the field. But let's talk about tomorrow night. Bobby Latmore and Bobby Allen will be on the call at Apopka High School. The Delaying Bulldogs will invade That's Apopka awesome. to experience the Hoka Hay. We talked about Bo Key. I mean, Bo Key is up there with O-Town and Hotlanta. <laughs> but in the city of Apopka, Hoka Hay is the way. It says the way, Coach now. Rolson has an outstanding team that was in the state championship two years ago. Had it not been for Timmy McLean in the second half, taking over that game when Apopka was leading. Right. It could have been the darters hoisting the state championship trophy up there in Tallahassee against the Osceola Cowboys. Some great talent at Apopka High School. One of the best junior defensive linemen in the entire country, Caven Call, the number one rated talent in the Orlando Sentinels Super 60, Latravian Barnes at linebacker. Andrew McLean, who was in the Seminole program last year, Timmy McLean's little brother, will take the quarterback reins for the Darters tomorrow night, facing the Bulldogs from Deland High School. So tune in tomorrow night at 7 o'clock from Apopka High School for another outstanding preseason matchup. If you're the defensive coordinator, Kyle, at Sarasota Riverview High School, if you're in the Rams program, and you're watching this film after it's exchanged on huddle tonight or tomorrow morning, you can bet the entire secondary will know where number one is for the I'm, Seminoles on every play next week. Listen, I'm exactly right. And I'm going to tell you exactly what I'm doing in practice. I'm getting a white jersey because they're coming down to visit with number one on it. And he's and I'm going to have my best player wear that to try and simulate where he's he so is good, at all times. You time. might even have one printed with Damari Lawrence on the back so <laughs> everybody knows who he, who he is. That's right. I'm, and I, on your defense. And I know I know uh, uh, Sarasota wears maroon, I believe, but we're going to get a yes. black helmet and black pants to emulate everything we can so he can stand out like a sore thumb when we play him. we got to find where number one is. Well, that would be a super week one matchup because – the Rams are known for a high-powered, explosive attack where they can put up a half a hundred any given week. A yeah, great throw here by the quarterback on time, comes out of it, releases it. Just a tad high, but it's catchable. Receiver does a great job catching the ball. Again, these are confidence-type throws, right? This is a, this is the younger quarterback. So guess what? He's he's building his confidence. So when it's time to go, Coach, I'm – I'm eight for nine right now, Coach. I'm ready to go. Let me take my shot. Instead of him being, you know, two for seven or whatever the case may be, he's ready to go. So when the shot comes, he's confident in the throw. A lot of that goes in when he plays quarterback, confidence. Second and ten for the Seminoles. Little fold play. They have that wing that's a tight end, and he folds back in between the guard and tackle and takes on the play side linebacker, yeah, trying to hit it up inside once again. Yeah, Billy's just a slick way now running the lead. That's really all it is. You know, you got to but that's all it is. Instead of coming ISO. from the I formation, it's shotgun with a wing getting back in as the lead backer, isn't it? That's all it is, man. So you're taking those H-back guys, putting them on the wing. You got the time to get in there because everything's from shotgun. The quarterback is already out of the way, and, and uh, you get an opportunity to just lead up on him. Third and seven. Tigers with pressure. 
And when down, Coach down, Cox down. talks to his young quarterback, Sakirios Lasky, he's held the ball a lot tonight, and that's resulted in sacks against him when he's been on the field. Learning point, he's a sophomore. He has a high ceiling in terms of what he will be capable of producing with his play. We saw glimpses of it in the seven-on-seven seven contest at the Villages when they made it to the final mm -hmm. against Ocala Vanguard before – Ocala Vanguard, they're one of the best teams in Florida when it comes to the seven-on-seven -seven circuit every year with the talent they have at the skilled positions. But we saw his talent on display back during that seven-on-seven -seven tournament, and he will only continue to get better because seven-on-seven -seven is different than tackle <laughs> football when it comes to quarterback. Everything's live, and you got people coming at you. Yeah. Your windows get tighter real quick. And also what's going to happen is he's young. Oh. No flag down for a face mask. He got the wheels. Can he cut back? He has the block that he needs. I do not see any hankies on the field. The field looks clean. Touchdown, Jones. They needed a big play either took, from their defense or their special teams, and they just got one. And that's what I'm talking about. That changes the momentum of the game. The momentum meter for Seminole was all the way – it was on black and orange on their side. Now the momentum meter is orange and green. Coach Williams is walking you. out to the field. Will he go for two or will he elect to kick it? He's, he's going for two right now. He's bringing him back. It looks like he's going for two and is going to call timeout. He's going for two. I'm going to just say this, Coach, as this put on my coaching hat right now, you're going to get Actually, the kicker is out. 32's there. He's okay. just making sure he's got 11 on the field, and they're sound. They're sound in what they do, and they're blocking responsibilities. And I like this. Instead of going for the win, he wants to see his, if his kicker can make a pressure kick. Sure, sure. And here's the deal, believe it or not, with all that momentum, the pressure is still on Jones. Seminole is still in the driver's seat right now. The pressure is still on Jones to make this kick. Now you okay. go for one. Now, now you go for one, one, coach. And half. Uh, Too uh, late. Uh, uh. Now yeah, here, if he has his quarterback with Julian Calvez in, does he go for one? Because he does. He's down to his third team quarterback that we've seen tonight, or second team. We don't know what the depth chart is for the Tigers, so he's going to elect to continue to try to tie this ball game with 3:35 remaining. Tie ball game, gentlemen. <laughs> Great kick by the kicker from Jones, man. You know, I have to say this. This is what we were talking about earlier about momentum, talking about opportunities in high school. You only need one. And we talked about special teams. 33% of victory comes through special teams. And a lot of people don't realize that that's what's going to change the game a lot of times. We're going to take a break in the action right now and get right back to you as soon as we can. Like no other. In 2021. 2021. For 2021. They broke the glass. The Delta variant. Biden is currently attending the G7 summit by the Chinese government. The ocean caught fire. To the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do. You know, a little monitor. He, he caught, yeah, about, about 65, 70. He As we return with 335 remaining in this ball game, I'm telling you, we have just reached the highest level of energy, enthusiasm on the Tiger sideline tonight. The music is cranking. The fans are excited. Many people on their feet. I mean, Billy, even the team managers are dancing. That's what special teams, I keep, that's why it's called special. Everybody gets excited when it happens, man. And you got 10 headhunters and a kicker out there that want to go down and jar this ball out. We've seen the Tiger kick coverage get down the field fast all night long, whether it's punt or kickoffs. Watch the unit in orange get down the field. They want to make a play right here. Wedge up the middle. No blocking. None. There it is, the orange C. Like I said, those Tigers, look at them. Look at the – well, you can't see. We, we can see it. You guys can see it as well. So do but six guys get a jumping. tackle, credit for a tackle on that, or do they get credit for an assist? Because I don't think you could give the tackle to one person on no, that one. No, you can't, man. You got to cut that down to six slices, man. First and ten, seven. 3.30 on the clock, though, Billy. Look, here's what's great about it. Seminole is still in the driver's seat in this deal, right? As long as they don't, like, fumble the ball or anything, they're still in the driver's seat. They pretty much can take out this last possession 
being methodical down the field, taking their time. They bring in the, the, the senior quarterbacks. So. Look who's back. Luke Rickers back behind center. The Seminoles will start in the middle of the field at the 25-yard line. His favorite target tonight has been Darren Lawrence. We've called his name. Lawrence is to the top of the screen, one-on-one -on -one against the corner. Safety overplaying for help. The Seminoles come out and try to hit the quick hitter up the middle. But it's interesting. An adjustment for the Tigers is, is they are going to give help to the corner wherever Lawrence is. And at that time, the safety was rotating over the top. He wasn't even playing run responsibility. He was in an angle backpedal towards Lawrence's side of the field. Yeah, like I said, they're going to play cover three. Jones is going to keep everything in front of them, right? Make you make a mistake on offense, right? You got to go 80 yards right now, 70 yards. Staying patient on the ground. You want to drop back and play over the top of our receivers? We'll just keep grinding it up inside, hoping our endurance, our offseason conditioning will begin to pay dividends and can and hit another one quick up inside. We've seen it two times tonight for big gains for first downs with quick hitters. Yeah, There's no rush. You do not want the Tigers to get the ball again tonight. It's either going to end in a tie with you trying to win it or you're going to win it. Well, we're going to find out right now. It's third and one. No blitz. He got it. He got the first. The Tigers think it's out, and it Tigers is. Tigers with the ball. I did not see it. They forced the fumble. Tremendous collision down on the field. The Tiger is still on the ground, but a jarring hit. Now he's up. And here's the thing, the young man already had the first down, and that's what a lot of young guys don't realize, protecting the football. You got the first down. I know he doesn't really understand that or see it because you're in the mix of all those bodies, but you got to protect the ball, man, because the ball is always the issue. Steven it's rocking Sparrow. right here in Tiger Stadium. Is this Tiger Stadium? It's rocking over here, baby. Well, I wouldn't quite call it Death Valley, <laughs> whether you're an LSU or Clemson fan, but it is Tiger Stadium. I'll give you that. Look at him. The swagger is unbelievable. I'm loving it. Going for the Good throw away. But Great once job. again, secondary personnel of the Seminoles play in their zones, not giving any Tiger receiver any open space. That time they did elect to go at a different target. They tried to target Andreas Graham, the senior defensive back, they went away from Jakari Henderson. But Graham, once again, stayed over the top, played his zone, was all over the comeback route at the sticks. Yeah, but they were looking to throw it initially to the running back on the backfield, and the linebacker did a great and job. he just ate that up as well. Sure. Cam Moore coming off the edge. AC and Cobb too early, premature before the ball is snapped. This has been a theme tonight that Coach Williams will emphasize all week next week before they play Dr. Phillips High School that, hey, we're going backwards. He might even pull a truck up and hook the mic up to it with a beeping sound because that's what's happened on so many drives tonight for the Tigers. They've gone backwards, and it's been their own doing. And unfortunately, man, when plays like this, is second and, and it was second and 10, they dialed up a, a, a dash play or a sprint out play. And you get called for a false start. So now the defense has seen what was about to happen. So now you have to do something different. It probably was the perfect call at the time because it was there. I'm looking at the coach's body language. He's like, man, we had it. We quarters coverage it. right now. Now they're rotating back. Safety rotates out of quarters. Look back into cover three. Trying to hit the crossing route. Here comes that speed again. He Ball's fumbled. on the ground. Did they get it before it went Seminole out? Seminole gets the ball. Looking for a signal. They're marking first down. Oh, no. They said he did not wow. have possession before he was out of bounds. The Tigers will be inside the 10-yard line with two minutes and one second remaining. That is so important. Guys have to understand that you must possess the ball. If you push it out of bounds or you don't possess it as you're going out of bounds, the ball stays to the offense. So you must be able to keep the ball as you're going out of bounds, especially when it's hovering around that sideline. In years past, Coach Williams would use his big offensive line to pound you into submission. And it's interesting. He's going to a tight end set. A.C. on Cobb is at tight end. They're in Pro 21 formation. personnel. Two backs, a tight end. Now they're going a tight end wing. Look for them to come left. 
It's the inside zone play that they scored on earlier with the option. It's interesting. They run away from the strength of their offensive line. You got a tight end. You got a wing that motions over pre-snap, and they go back to the weak side, hoping that they would catch the Seminoles slanting to the strength of the line. I, I want to say this too, Billy. I, I was looking at this. I, I think the quarterback may pull this one. They are so this. He has Sem shown he likes to run it. And Seminole, Seminole has sold out to stop the run because that's how they scored on them earlier. This quarterback has the so ability you, and the footwork to pull this joke and walk. Are you the telling line. me that was a setup play? Same set, same play, but yes, this sir. time he'll pull and come behind the strength of his offense. He's gonna, yep, he's gonna go the other way with it. Here it is. He's got all the field, all the field in the world. There's, there's a safety here that has responsibility for him. You can see three creep, thirty-one creeping up. Will have responsibility for the quarterback on this. The linebackers, the backside linebacker, and the frontside linebacker will play. They are ignoring the quarterback and its safety responsibility the way Coach Lodge has it designed right now. And I'd you know love what? to see that one-on-one -on -one with a quarterback and a safety at the goal line with 112 to play with the game on the line. Doesn't hey, get any better than that. Doesn't get any better than that, and I'll take my odds, guys. I'll, I'll take my odds with the quarterback and the safety one-on-one -on -one with about 20 yards of open field. We're gonna, Kyle, we're going to step away from the action and let the audience catch their breath before we set up for the last. Is sports threat. And this is the new free Sports Threat app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure to college coaches. Get clout. Unbalanced. Motion, quarterback has the option to throw a run, wants to hit the arrow in the flat. Seminoles all over it. Pass is incomplete. They were trying to get the ball to Jalen Williams, their junior slot receiver. They motioned him across the field, roll the quarterback, which is an easy throw, and try to hit the quick arrow into the flat. Seminole was the safety that had quarterback responsibility. As soon as the motion occurred, that's now his responsibility to lock on in man, and he was all over that arrow route. Yeah, he was all over it. Quarterbacks have to know how to put it in there. He tried to place that ball, and it sailed away from him. Sometimes you got to just throw it, right? Don't think about it. I can see him going through the motions of thinking about it, and he ended up sailing that ball a little bit. Third down, can you tell on the far sideline where the sticks are? Are they at the five? Uh, right now the ref is standing at about the approximately about the six-yard line, looks like. Six-yard line, it looks like. Our vantage point, ladies and gentlemen, is in the stands due to COVID protocols and the safety of everybody in the press box. We are actually pulling a Harry Carey with the bleacher bum from Wrigley Field. We are amongst the Tiger faithful and having fun. Having fun, man. With this is great, great atmosphere. Love it. Like I say, uh, we're going to be interested to see right here. It's third and six is two down territory, of course. Do you kick the field goal to win or do you try to put it in? I think you kick the field goal to win it. You play I want to put the pressure on my kicker again <laughs> and see if he can do it. That would be a, a huge for that kid's confidence heading into the season and when he does have to make an important kick. Slot receiver way out is probably to stretch this free safety. I think you get a slant underneath by number one. Cam Moore over the slant. tight end. Will they hit him quick? It's a fall down play. It's a fall down play, and Cam Moore is all over Anthony Rucker. A fall down play, ladies and gentlemen, is the tight end, Anthony Rucker. It's a trip set. Rucker is at tight end. He took two steps and then fell on the ground flat. Cam Moore was assigned to him in coverage. He was not falling for anything. No pun intended. I'm sorry, that one just happened. But when he saw Rucker get up, Williams was right there and followed it, making the pass nearly impossible to complete. And here we go. Yeah, you got to set. You, you had to be able to set that up a little. One oh three on the clock for the potential win. A twenty three yard attempt. It appears from right between the uprights. Blocked. We featured number four at corner in his play earlier in this drive. Andreas Graham. He came flying through. <laughs> it is blocked, man. Great momentum. This is, this is why you schedule these games. That's a state champ's mindset. Yeah, man. Those kids in that program took that field, and they're like, we are not losing this game right now. That's right. We might not win it, but we ain't losing it, and we will block it. And that's, hey, 
talk it into existence, and you could bet that's what they were doing. This isn't going to happen. We're not walking out of here with a loss because they made a field goal. 54.8 seconds. Will Coach Lodge allow his offensive staff to be aggressive? Luke Rucker is out on the field. His primary target tonight, Darren Lawrence, is into the boundary, and we've seen Lawrence be able to beat Tiger defenders on go routes. And Jones is in a prevent defense. Give it up. Make a tackle. Get out of bounds. Got to keep him in bounds if you're He's the defense. And he Clock did a good running. job. Let's go. 47 seconds and ticking. Timeout Seminoles. We're going to take another commercial break before we get back to the conclusion of this thriller. What's up, man? Is Sports Threat, and this is the new free Sports Threat app, changing recruiting forever. Once again, here we go. Know the name, know the flow. The first social network made for athletes, where you can show your talent. Thought I was weak, huh? You ain't see the work I put in all week, huh? And where you can be seen by athletes, fans, and coaches nationwide. Upload all your stats to the app. Get exposure to college coaches. Get clout. And get certified with a check mark that will change your life. Join the squad. Download the Sports Threat app today. Sports Threat, it's always free. Kyle, we saw a defensive slugfest in the first half with very little offense. Wasn't very much fun to, it, to watch if you love high powered <laughs> offenses. But in the second half, this game has turned around. 44.8 seconds to go. Both offenses, we've had electric plays by the Tigers special teams. The Seminole offense twice with touchdown drives. Rucker going to the right. Looks like he's got a holding call behind him. Yeah, unfortunately, he's got a holding call. But that's going to come back and kill some precious time. Jones is playing in a prevent defense. They have three backs. Some people called it cover six. You can call it whatever you want. Some people call it prevent. But basically, they're playing cover three, uh, uh, extended, as some people call it, man, to keep everything in front of them. Just don't go beyond the goal line. And uh, I think they're going to do that. But one thing I do like is Seminole is not going to run the clock out. They're trying to do something to score with it. Well, explain the coverage that they're in in this prevent. So you've got three deep with deep responsibility. Tell us about the corners and what their responsibility is. So basically, they're actually lined up in cover three as it would be as if it played out. The corners have deep third in which they're already lined up 20 yards deep, 25 yards deep. The safety is already 25. But then you field. have two other corners out there too. So it's really three deep action with two corners. So what What are the two corners? You see so seven the, right here in front of us for Jones. So that corner Steven is Sparrow. actually – That corner that you see technically is already the outside linebacker yes. standing in his, in his curl flat area. And he's what is he coached there. to do? So he's basically underneath anything curl flat and may sink. If they're playing man with it, then it'll be three deep man under. Not sure they're in that. Looks like they're still playing zone. Now they're man under now. His main responsibility is don't let it get out of bounds. Correct. You have to stay outside the ball. The middle of the field, though. You can see a brilliant call that picks up a first down when teams are trying to prevent you from getting out of the, out of bounds and defending the sideline, the middle of the field is wide open. Yeah, MOF is always open. I always call it middle of the field. So MOF, the MOF is always going to be open when you're dealing with prevent because Jones' extra defender is the clock, right? So that's going to help them get out of this game. I'm not going to have to put you on an acronym count this year, are we, yeah, in 2021? Man. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, there's one. Hey, man. I thought I'm, we were going to make it through a game without an acronym. Hey, man. It is. When you talk coaches, you got to talk. Hey, I'm telling you, you got to speak the language, <laughs> don't you? There's Ladies Spanish, and gentlemen, you've got, Spanish, there's English, you've there's got there's two football. coaches with over 50 years of experience enjoying bringing you this ball, cat, ball game tonight, this broadcast. That's dangerous. Hope he drops it. If he doesn't, clock is running. Yes, and this is what Jones is counting on. You can pick up the first downs, but the, the clock doesn't stop. They'll stop to move the sticks, but then they're going to start it again, and it's going to be trouble for you to try to get another playoff and keep attacking us in the gut of the field, right down the middle of the heart. Yeah, man, we right here at a timeout. I believe that may have been Seminole's last timeout, 16.8. So 16.8 remaining. Seminole is going to be forced to put the ball down the field deep, right into the secondary coverage. This game... We could see a big play with a, a catch and run, or we could see a pick where Jones starts to take off heading for the victory going the other way with a ball. But this it. ball will be put up with a chance for a receiver to make a play. You'll throw it into harm's way with 16.8 seconds remaining. 
Yeah, they, now here's the deal. People, a lot of people don't realize too. In high school, once you get a first down, the clock stops. So Seminole does have a semi timeout, as long as they have a second play call. The question they, is, when you were a head coach, did you have that put in? Yes. Two weeks in. Uh, yes, I'm going to just tell you why, because we want to constantly practice it. We would so, too. So we have it two weeks in. The two plays are called right now. The first play is middle of the field. The second play is the, is the goal line shot. Every receiver runs and gets on the line of scrimmage, so you don't have to worry about not having enough linemen on the line of scrimmage when you coach it. So right. I agree. Every team should be practicing it, even though it's this early in the season. Yeah. Right now, middle of the field is open. Behind the linebackers, in front of the safeties, is wide open. Trick play, hook and ladder. I, I mean, that may be early. I don't know out, if they do that, man, I'm done for the season. <laughs> Get me out of here. <laughs> no, but I'm saying seriously, if you throw this behind the linebackers, behind the safeties, uh, it's I, open. I'm right. going to tell you right now, though, I don't like the three deep. I would rather have four deep in this set because there's seams down both hashes. And if your defensive back's yeah. a step late. Middle of the field is there, right in the you middle. You watched Edgewater High School lose a state championship in this type of defense against your team, correct? Yes. Yes, man. So, I mean. Kenny Ingram, one of the best safeties Edgewater High School has ever had, was late with his angle from the middle of the field. And your team late. stole one in Dope Campbell Stadium against them. He was late. That's yes. why I don't like three back as a secondary coach. I would rather have four back and have, have them make their kid out jump yeah. or out athlete me for the ball. There's yeah. seams against this coverage. Can Rucker hit one of those seams is the question with 10.9 seconds remaining. All right. So with 10.9 seconds, I'm not worried about Rucker beating me with his feet. I'm playing man under right here, three deep if you want to do it that way. We lock up underneath. I keep everybody back. I don't care about a first down at this point. It doesn't help. Inside them. run. They want the clock to stop. Let's now, go. Let's Don't get anybody play. hurt. You're going to spike it. And let's see if he has enough arm to put it on the goal line. While we have an injured Tiger down on the field, we're going to step away from the action just for a second. There's not a lot of places you can go where exactly what they put on their signs is exactly what you get in your food. So many people think that the way I eat and the way I train and a lot of things I do in life are because of sports. I want to be as healthy 50 years from now because every day that God gives me, I want to make the most of that. Clean juice, healthy, fast, organic food. The stage is set. 14-14, Tigers Knowles. 4.7 seconds remaining. Luke Recker will take the last snap, barring a penalty. And that's the this Seminoles is the last have play the ball game. on about their own 48-yard line. He's looking towards his bunch set up top with a post wheel, double post depot wheel. That's ball the game. The Tigers coming. pick it up, or pick it off, I should say. The corner did not bite on the two posts going inside, was waiting for the wraparound wheel. And it didn't disappoint. And I think both coaching staffs You're are thankful, school. number one, that they – both teams responded better in the second half in different phases of the game. A lot of things to teach and correct. The Seminole, Seminoles will head for Riverview High School in Sarasota next week. We wish them all the best. We'll be right across the street at Camping World Stadium as Rodney Wells brings in the Dr. Phillips Panthers to take on these very Jones Tigers. Any wrap-up thoughts tonight, Kyle, from what we witnessed? Yeah, man, really, like you say, it was kind of a defensive game in the first half, right? A lot of guys getting the jitters out, coaches feeling each other out like a boxing match. Now we're in round six, the second half of this deal. Let's open this thing up, coach. Let's play some real football, and that's what we saw from both programs tonight, man. Excellent exhibition game. You know, I think they're both going to look good for the season, man. My hat's off to both coaching staffs, both schools, both programs, man. I'm excited to see what they do during the season. From everybody at Varsity Sports Network, we appreciate our new relationship with Orange County Public Schools that allows us to be here to broadcast this game from Jones High School tonight. Remember, tomorrow at 7 o'clock from Apopka High School, the DeLand Bulldogs will square off against Coach Rolson, Jeff Rolson's Blue Darters. From everybody, once again, here at Varsity Sports Network, for my partner to my left, Kyle Hayes, I'm Bill Daniel. We wish each of you a wonderful evening.